Thank you to Capture One for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check out the link down below to get 20% off your annual subscription. So today's a bit of a chill day. I'm in the studio. I'm going to be editing some photos. So I thought, why not just take you along with me and we can edit together. I've been working a lot recently. I've done a bunch of shoots, a mixture of commercial work and also editorial work. I recently did a shoot with this amazing model called Fallon for Voir Fashion Magazine. If you see my last behind the scenes video, I also worked with the team at Voir on that shoot as well. So if you haven't seen it, make sure you check it out. But it was a fun shoot. We played around with a few different makeup looks. So I'm gonna edit them today and you can see what I do. As always, I'm using Capture One for the first part of my editing process. And one thing I love about Capture One, just as a company, is that they're always updating and adding new features and listening to their users to make things a bit easier for us. So there's a bunch of new features in here, which I will kind of show you as I go through. Um, so let's get into it. So I've got a new session here and the first thing I want to do is import the images of course. So I'm going to go to file and then import images. And then I'm going to go to import from and look for where the photos are on my hard drive. They're right here. So I can go to review for import. Straight away they've all come in. If you see my last video on Capture One when Capture One 23 launched back in November, they've added this feature which is groups. It analyzes your photos and then groups them into similarity. It will kind of find photos that are like all shot with the same sort of lighting or all shot in the same location or all from the same model and it will group them together, which makes it easier for you to review them before you import them. So as you can see here on the right, I've got my different groups. So I've got 42 pictures in this group. It separated this one because this was a light misfire. It looks different, so it's been separated from the rest of them, so that's fine. So we shot a, a few different looks, and as you can see, it's kind of separated, separated them into the different looks for me, which is quite helpful. But one thing that's new in the 16.2 version is this up here. If you look in the, the kind of top left, you've got this box here, which is called face focus. So what this basically is doing is it zooms in to your photo so that you can easily and quickly check the focus and be able to see like, as you scroll through, whether the photo is sharp or not. It automatically goes to the eyes in most cases, but you can change the view. So if you come over to face focus settings, you can change the zoom level. So I'm at 50%, I can go 100%, or I can go to limit to face, and that way it will show me the whole face or I can go to limit to eye and it will really just focus on the eyes. So as you tap through, it quickly loads a preview of that face focus, which is really handy because you always wanna make sure that the photos that you're importing are like the sharp ones. Now, m all of mine are pretty much in focus because I'm the camera I use has a pretty good autofocus system and it focuses on the eyes quite pin sharp. But this is really handy, especially if you're working at low apertures, shallow depth of field. It's so important to get the focus right on your subject's eyes and this just makes sure that the photos that you're importing they are completely sharp, so that's really handy. So I've selected all the photos that I want and I'm just gonna go to import here and it's just gonna import them all for me. As you can see, they're loading in pretty fast and Capture One often focuses on efficiency uh, with their software, which I quite like um, because the faster the software is, the faster I can get my job done, basically. But I think in this version, um, previews are supposed to load up to 26% faster than in previous versions, so that's great as well. So I'm just gonna let the rest of these load in and then I'll be right back. So the photos have loaded in and I'm just scrolling through now and there's so many that I love. I love when I do a shoot and you've got a great model because you just have so many like options to play with. The hair and makeup was also great. Um, we went for this like almost 70s kind of style hair and then that's why I decided to light it from the back so that you get this kind of like glow effect and then the makeup is really like fun and playful with these pink and orange tones and the crystals. But there's so many options to go through. I did find one that I really liked here. I really like this one. I'm gonna mark this one as green, just so that I have it as a select. And then let me have a look for some others. These two. But I think I'm gonna go with the one on the left as well. I'm gonna go for this one. So in terms of editing, the first thing I wanna do is crop the image. And then I'm gonna probably go in and add a bit more contrast. Uh, play around with the colors and the tones of the shadows and highlights a little bit and then maybe add a bit of texture like add a bit more grain um, because I want to go for this kind of soft dreamy slightly vintage feel so I'm going to add a bit of grain in there as well so the first thing I want to do is crop I'm just going to press C which is the shortcut for cropping and I usually go for a three by four crop most of the time I know Instagram is four by five but for like my website and for other things I prefer three by four so the first thing that I want to do is I want to play around with the curves and just add a bit more contrast as I hover my cursor over the image you can see like the areas that I cover 
I can see on this curves graph, like where it's gonna effect, whether it's at the top end in the highlight or at the bottom in the shadows. So I can see with that orange line roughly where I want to adjust. Now I wanna bring a bit more shadow into this side of her face um, to really enhance this cheekbone and the shadows here. So I just wanna pull this down. I might go a little bit lower because I think it's, yeah, there we go, that's good. In the opposite end, I'm gonna pull the highlights up a bit just to give it a bit more contrast. Nice. So using the exposure warning, I can see that this is like overexposed. I'm not worried too, too much about that because obviously the style of the image is that kind of like glowy, blown out kind of look. Um, but I will be careful. I don't want to push it too far. And I'm also going to bring the highlights down a little bit so they have like a sort of flattened look. And you can see this is what we've done so far. If we do a before and after. You can just see we brought a bit more contrast into the face especially. Now this hair is a bit blown out so I'm going to actually come up to high dynamic range and I'm going to bring my highlights down a little bit and that will just bring a bit more detail into that hair so it's not completely overexposed. I can check my exposure again. Okay cool, so I've checked my exposure now it's no longer overexposed. So just bringing those highlights down has made a huge difference to my exposure levels, which is great. I also want to bring the saturation down a little bit. I like to slightly desaturate my images. It's just my style. Um, so I'm going to bring that down to like minus five, minus, mm, minus eight. And if we do need to add some color back in, we can do that later. But overall, I want the image to feel quite desaturated and then I'll put pops of color back in where I want them. So on the eye or like maybe add a shadow tone to the background or something like that. I'm also going to bring the clarity down just a bit. I feel like that's just going to also soften the image and give it that vintage kind of hazy 70s look that I was going for. So this is the difference. This is the changes we made so far. Just added a bit more contrast. And next I want to go into color and I want to just add some subtle shadow toning. So I'm feeling like adding a bit of a blue kind of tone to the shadows put this up a little bit nice and then for the highlights I think I want to go more in a warm tone direction so I'm gonna bring that up here as well now I feel like obviously I desaturated the image before but I feel like it's missing a bit of life it feels a little bit dull so I want to kind of bring back some of the reds pinks and oranges I think so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to the color editor and then come to saturation and I'm just gonna push those reds up and just with that saturation, I'm just gonna push that up a little bit more. And that's just brought a bit more life into her face. Now we can see the eye color a bit better. We can see the lips a bit clearer, but the overall image still has that sort of slightly desaturated feel. We could also boost the greens a little bit just to make the eyes makeup pop a bit more. And then I think I wanna add a bit of grain. So I'm gonna come to refine and I'm gonna go to film grain. I'm gonna go for a soft grain and maybe push this up to like, about 30. Okay, cool, so this one is done. So on to the next photo, and I could just copy the adjustments from this photo onto this photo, just by going to copy up here, and then clicking apply. And as you can see, it's copied all those adjustments straight over. But say, for example, you have a style that you use all the time, it could be like your preset style that you put on every photo, or maybe it's like a black and white style that you like to put on photos. Capture One now allows you to create custom keyboard shortcuts. So you can put that style on a keyboard shortcut and quickly apply it to like all the photos in your session. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go to edit, edit keyboard shortcuts, and then up here you have your shortcuts. So these are like all the standard ones. I've got my own set because I've changed a few things already, but you have like, this shows you all your shortcuts that you have. So you can make shortcuts from pretty much anything. If you come over to sh custom shortcuts, apply style, and then you can choose the style that you want to apply. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna choose um, this black and white style that I've created. And then in here, I can set what I want my shortcut to be. I'm gonna go for option G, right? Cause that's not assigned to anything else. And I know that if I press option G, it's gonna apply that style. So if I come back in here, I'm going to click option G and as you can see it's applied that style very quickly. If I come out of the green selection and come back to all of them, if I select a bunch of photos from the set and just press option G, 
it quickly applies that style to all the photos that I've selected. So this is very handy if you're gonna do a batch edit or if you have a style that you use all the time, you can just apply that to a keyboard shortcut and quickly apply it to your photos. I kind of love how this looks in black and white. It feels very like old Hollywood. It feels like a scene from a film. It feels very dramatic, especially with this type of lighting. Um, but I know that the makeup artist will not be happy with me because we cannot see the colors of the makeup that she did. So I'm just gonna reset this and I'm just gonna apply the adjustments that we made on the last photo. And then I'm just gonna do a crop on here as well. So I'll probably crop this to about here. And that's that done. So as I mentioned, I used Catch One for the first part of my editing process. So that's what you see me do right now. I will need to edit these further and sort of clean up any stray hairs, any blemishes on, on the skin and things like that. And Catch One makes it really easy for you to export the photos and open them in another application. And in this latest version, you can do this again using keyboard shortcuts. So I can go to edit and I can go to edit keyboard shortcuts again. Back in custom shortcuts, I'm gonna click on this plus icon and I'm gonna go to edit with. From here, I can choose the application. So I'm gonna come down to where it says other and it's gonna open up all my applications. So I can choose any application I want to <laughs> try and open this photo with. I'm gonna go with Photoshop because that's what I'm gonna use next. Um, so I'm gonna to go to open and then I can input a keyboard shortcut for this. So I'm gonna go with option E. So E is for edit basically. And then I can click on one of these photos and I'm gonna press option E and it will come up with this window where I can select export settings. So I can put the format I want, I can go for a TIFF or a JPEG, um, uncompressed, I can set my color profile, my resolution, the size, everything like that. I can set all my metadata and then just click edit variants and then it should open it up in the program that I've selected. And what I can do is I can make some changes to this image in here, just, I don't know, remove some of these hairs or something, or I can now save this back into its original format. So as you can see, I made those adjustments over in Photoshop. I've saved them. It's updated the TIFF file that is created in Capture One and I can see those changes here as well. So this is great if you need to bounce back and forth between applications. So you can export it from Capture One quickly, open it in another program, make some adjustments, save it back, come back to Capture One, and you can keep all your photos in one place, nice and organized, and you can continue editing over here. And you can do that with keyboard shortcuts, which is quite cool. So that's how the photos are looking in Capture One. I'm really happy so far. I'm gonna go ahead and do a full retouch on these, clean them up, and show you the finished results. I love how this shoot came out. I don't do too much beauty work, but when I do, I always really enjoy it because you get to kind of focus a bit more and really get to perfect the lighting and really focus on just the person's face, which I think is quite a nice change of pace from like full fashion shoots with a lot of like clothes and styling. And it just feels a lot more grounded, a lot more focused. And it's usually quite chill on set as well, which is nice. If you want to see a lighting breakdown of this shoot, let me know, I can do that. If you're interested in trying out Capture One, make sure you use the link in the description to get 20% off your new annual subscription. To see more of my work, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Ian Hippo. And to see more photography content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.